Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, January 7th. It's 11.27. Yeah, I'm about to lay down and try to get a nap. So far, it's quiet. So I'm going to try. Okay, but I had to get on here first because I've been checking some my comments. And uh, I got a mix of, you know, some of you just... um. Okay, you don't understand why a good Christian would ever call anybody out, okay? And that this new age, and i sorry, I don't want to offend any of you, but I know in my heart, as hard as it is, I've been called to expose lies and to teach the truth. That's why I'm so always bringing up once saved, always saved is the lie from the pit of hell. That's one of them that Jesus wants driven home. Now, most of the population down here in the South believes that. So is it wrong for me to try to tell people that their church has been teaching them this lie all this time, all their life, if they're my age, that's for a long time, and it offends them. Or what about the same denomination, maybe others, I'm sure, believe in cessationism, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today, they died out with the apostles. Now, what kind of sense does that even make? And how can people even believe that if they read their word? That the gift, praying in tongues, well, it, that wasn't even first. Go back to when Jesus walked on the earth. Now, bear with me before you just shut me off because I'm getting to the other. Naming people. Hold on now. How many times did Jesus call out the Pharisees and the scribes who were the knowledgeable people, the good people, the leaders? And yet, they would teach one way and then act another. Didn't Jesus say that? It, how many times did he say, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees? And they thought he was talking about bread. And then he had to tell them, No. They teach one thing and they do another. And I don't remember what all. But <laughs> remember the time he said, Woe unto you, you hypocrites, you whitewashed tombs. You are empty. And in other words, it's like saying, you are acting like a Christian, but you are empty and void of the Holy Spirit. You have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. That is cessationism there. Form of godliness. They learn the Bible, the parts they're taught. They study from their little, our daily breads and all those little things they can get from their denomination. They're pointed to study the scriptures they believe in and avoid the ones they don't want them to read. What does that remind you of? Who withholds most of the scripture and just teaches their congregation, seven commandments that they made up. You must go to church every Sunday. You must go to confession at least once during Easter or something like that. You got to take communion at least once a year. Uh, you can't divorce. You can't, uh, I can't remember them all now. That's Catholicism. Man-made laws. Okay. So I try, when the Lord brings it up, I expel, I expose the lies of Catholicism. And 
I really haven't gotten into the other denominations or Jehovah's Witnesses, but the Lord hasn't brought them to me, so I haven't brought them to you much. I may have once here and there. But the point is, what is the difference of me helping a, a Catholic, let's say, that doesn't, that just got born again, remember, they're sitting under the authority of the Pope. So wouldn't it be wrong for me to not expose the, the lies they're taught, the wrongness of being one, and to not, if I didn't say you need to denounce your relationship with the Catholic Church and stop following the laws of the Pope. He is not Jesus on earth. Okay, so what if that offends all the Catholics? Am I wrong to teach that? Because that's offensive to a Catholic. Or what I already said is offensive to all Baptists. And there, if I said something about sprinkling babies with water on the head, that is not a baptism. And how many denominations can you think of besides Catholicism? I know Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalians maybe. Some of you could probably tell me. They baptize their babies. And they don't know what they're doing. And they consider them baptized. Is it wrong for us to expose that? Because it might offend somebody. Now, somebody is teaching a doctrine that I have felt in my spirit is new age. I am going to expose it. This business of calling the Holy Spirit feminine just because, here's here's what a lot of women I've read comments. Uh, if man was made in the image of God, what was women made in the image of? Duh, we're still human. Human beings were made in the image of God. In other words, we have a head, eyes, nose, mouth, a body, arms, legs, and a brain to think. It's a more advanced brain, although it's nowhere near what God has. We were created. Adam and Eve were perfect. Did y'all know that? They were perfect. They had glorified bodies, you could say. They were not going to die. But what did they do? They disobeyed. If I could have preached a sermon that would have kept them from doing that, I would have done it. Now, that's ridiculous, isn't it? They were the first two people and already messed everything up. So we're not perfect. We're not. But the Holy Spirit has shown me that is wrong. And it all started when that book, The Shack, was written. It might have started before that. That person who wrote that book might have got it from wherever. But that's when I started seeing it on YouTube. So, God is one. Yes, there's three parts. But but the Holy Spirit is the omnipresence of Almighty God. Are you really going to tell me that His Spirit that goes everywhere is feminine? Or worse, she's a goddess up in heaven. She's His wife. And together they had Jesus. I've heard that one. Now come on. Okay, if y'all want to say, well, yeah, God's given us new revelation through prophecy. Why? Why would, why would we need that? Does that help anybody get saved? It's just causing confusion. It's a division all of its own. People buying into that are dividing their own self away. 
that's not that's not me dividing that's them causing a division that's a that's a demonic satanic plan to divide in another way we've already got all these denominations and now we've got this we had this tight knit little community on YouTube with thousands watching each other and then oh Satan had to throw in this lie and that lie and some people bought it and others didn't how many of us have gotten false messages because of an open door or got lazy on the spiritual warfare or somehow a demon got in and we hadn't anointed I hadn't anointed in a while when I did someone saw that a de had to be a demon or could have been my angel but just to be on the safe side I anointed really good that night casting out all kind of demons just you know just get out get thee behind me Satan and all evil spirits I can't even remember what all I said but I anointed places I don't normally anoint just to be on the safe side not because God told me or anybody told me I just thought what happened Wow, that's weird. I see the time, but it's very, very, very faint. All right, I'm going to look it up just in case and see if we get anything out of it. That was weird. That was weirder than normal. And there's another survey. Not taking it. <sighs> 11.39. Let's see what it says. Dimo nizomi in the Greek. Ah, possessed with devils, possessed with the devil, of the devil, vexed with a devil, possessed with a devil, have a devil, to be under the power of a demon. Oh, my goodness. Voice, mi middle voice from G1142 is to be exercised by a demon. There's, don't you think that's the answer? It was a demon. And I cast that sucker out of here. That's what I'm seeing, but I'll go to the Hebrew. Thank you to the person who pointed that out. I did not notice it when I played it back. Well, I don't often, I don't watch myself, but I'll listen. Okay, this is Bene Barak. Bene Barak. Interesting. From the plural construction of 1121 and 1300. Bene Barak. Sons of Lightning. It's a city in Dan, but means Sons of Lightning. What does that tell you? Barak. Bene Barak. Ben, we know, is son. Yeah, Sons of Lightning. Oh, that's demons. It was a demon. That's... I guess he was confirming that it was a demon. So thank you to the person who told me that. Because like I said, I was casting demons out. <laughs> I was calling out. Uh, I can't even remember. See, I'm tired. I've been working on something for a neighbor. It's not earning me much, but it's helping her dog. She doesn't have a coat for her dog. She she could if she can afford it. But she doesn't get out shopping anymore like she used to. And everybody else is wearing a coat on their dog. So I offered to make her one. So I'm making her dog a coat. Okay, so anyway, I've been working on that. Now I'm really tired. But I had to check my comments and my emails real quick. 
and I wanted to get on here and I didn't mean to talk this long but the point is we cannot be afraid of offending people and I'm sorry if she's a sweet humble person and she's offended because she believes that or whether she called herself a goddess or not or someone misunderstood and she believes there's a, a goddess in heaven See, that I've heard from several in comments, in the comments. And that there is a mother figure up there. We know Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, yeah, there wasn't a sexual intercourse, but we don't know how it was done. It miraculously I mean, God can speak it in there. I mean, he didn't have to send the Holy Spirit even. But he did. The Holy Spirit's everywhere anyway. But he went in there in a, another way. The point is, you know, if you get red flags because somebody's calling somebody else out, maybe explain why. You feel that way, but I only do it when I feel like I have to. If you like everything else about her, I don't think that's a reason not to, but that is my opinion, okay, not to follow her, in other words. That is not, if you don't think that's a good enough reason not to follow her, then follow her. If she's got everything else right, but I personally can't. I can't follow somebody who doesn't have enough wisdom and understanding to know that the Holy Spirit of our Almighty God would not be feminine. And that's just how I feel. That is what I feel the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. And I don't ever call anybody out to hurt them. Never. It is to help you know who to follow. And if they have a false doctrine or idea going on, you just need to know about it. Anyway, I'm, you know, I, I, I'd like to say I'm sorry for offending any of you because I love my YouTube family y'all have been so supportive and if I can't be supportive of something that I feel very strongly about then I can't I can't lie I can't pretend it's okay I can't pretend once saved, always saved is okay. Because it's not. Jesus told me it was a lie from the pit of hell. And I know many people have unsubscribed from me because of it. Well, I can't help that. So many scriptures back that up. And I know I read all those scriptures somebody put about some of the attributes of the Holy Spirit have been given a feminine, uh, what do you call it, um, like wisdom, is considered to be a feminine noun, okay? That's because women are wise, huh? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we're more wise than men. Who made those up? Who decided they were masculine or feminine? Believe what you want on that account. Maybe it's not a salvation issue. Take it to the Lord. I have. I have again. And I haven't yet heard an answer. I'm ending it at that. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Because I think it's important. Most of what I get on here to say I think is important or I don't waste my time. I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer.
and over my internet connection and over each and every one of you and all of your devices and your internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here and I I hope that's soon I hope it's soon bye for now I'll talk to you later